Cool. All right. So now let's let's go over to it. So if you don't want to um buy software and kind of a learning curve, there are other options out there where you can record uh, stuff like an anchor, stuff like a Squadcast, Riverside, um, et cetera, et cetera. So let's kind of break down a few of those. Let's start with Squadcast. Now, full disclosure, I've never used it. Never heard of it. Never heard of it, but uh, I know it's an option, and I've I've heard I've heard it's an option. That's pretty much my, what my whole shtick about it is. Shtick. Never never actually used it. I just know it exists. So uh, I, I went on the website. I ran through their features, and basically they have local and cloud recording as well as an auto save feature. So, Chris, can you explain to me the difference between local and cloud recording? Local and cloud cloud recording. So, are we we're still talking about Squadcast? Yes. Okay. Um, because I know I think the next thing we're talking about also has that as well. Probably they um, do. They do yeah. local and cloud storage. So local that refers to. So if you're if you're doing a podcast, and it's video, it's not just audio. Even if it is audio or if it's video, basically if the the video or the audio is being recorded cloud based then that means the quality of the audio and or video will, de- will depend on the bandwidth of the people that are using it. Now, if it's local, that means, and this is while you're recording it, because you're, you're making a podcast, you're not just having a video chat here. Right. You're recording it. So if there's any skips or breaks in audio, that will be apparent to the other person on the other side. But okay, that's only one half of the pie. When you finish the podcast, you hit stop recording and you go to check it out and you're like, okay, what do we got? What's the quality? With local local recording, that means it is recorded on your machine, respective machines, the person, you, you yourself, the other person on the other end of the line. And um, once you're done, it stops recording. It saves the file locally on your computer and then it uploads. And then you see, you know, that's the final product as opposed to it being cloud-based and all of those skips, if there are any skips, depending on the internet connection of either of you, um, they won't be there. So that's the the major benefit to um, having it local as opposed to you know cloud-based. I definitely prefer local recording. Like all my recordings are local. Was that clear? Was that was no. That was very clear. Okay. That was very clear. Especially the skips part. I didn't know about the skips part. So local recording locally to me is huge because it. I I would rather rely more on. The, I would rather apply more pressure to the machine than the internet connection. That makes sense. Like I'd rather have a stronger machine to handle the load as opposed to relying on internet connection because anything can happen. And every and, and every person you're podcasting, you know, you don't know the specs of their internet connection. Yeah. You might have a super router right next to you. Doesn't mean that they do, you exactly. know, unless you're gonna do that much due diligence and send them a router every time you do a podcast <laughs> with somebody. Um, you know, you you're gonna wanna have it recording locally. Yeah, you know, for that final product to be smooth and seamless, and it, I, I, it's it's a good backup too. It's always it's always a good backup. Yep. Uh, but uh, Squadcast also records tracks separately, so everything will be in sync. That's essentially recording in multi-track. That's what a Pro Tools or an Audition already does, already has that feature built in. But they do it automatically, which is great. Um, that's a big feature. If you're looking for these online recordings, uh, soft platforms, that is something you definitely want to look for. It records tracks separately. So it's easier to edit as well. Uh, you can create templates for other meetings and reuse settings, which I think is also really cool. So say you have like a like a typically you do a a three person interv- like a three person podcast like me, Christian, and a co host. Mm. Um, but you also have episodes where it's just me and Christian. You can set up a template where it's two people and three people, or you can have templates for like different. Like I'm assuming different designs. So like ambiguous podcast solutions has like the yellow bubbles background. Whereas talking with Tarish has the orange bubble background when we're um, recording remotely, so stuff like that is very very useful. I thought that was a great feature to have. Um, team management on the back end, which is also really cool. So it's like me; it's my podcast. I am the owner of the podcast. I can assign team members to the job, like an editor, right? And they can have special features to special access. Like I can only write the description; they can only download the audio. Stuff like that. So if you're managing a team. Also super useful for stuff like that. Uh, a green room for testing audio and video before you actually hop into the call, which I thought was really cool as well. Um, so if, someone, if someone's coming into your meeting, they can test before they actually go into the interview. 
Uh, I don't think that's, it's not like a huge difference, but it's really just optics more than anything else. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it, you've got something on your face, maybe, or you know, maybe you want to adjust your camera a little bit, or maybe your microphone's not working. If yeah. you're doing a you know a podcast, you want it to be as smooth, as seamless, as professional as possible. Having a place where people can check themselves beforehand um, can make a big difference. Um, so you don't have to, you know, spend 10, 15 minutes doing that beforehand. Person yeah. Come on I mean, early. They could check themselves out, make sure everything's good. You can make sure everything's good on your end. And then you, you could also have like a team member probably in that green room, green room. Like, so say like so uh, to assist. Yeah, to assist. So say, say the podcast is with like, I don't know, the founder of a company like me. Like say I had a super fat ego and I was just kind of an asshole and like I was somewhat famous and my team wanted to make sure that the, once the guest hops in, they're ready to go. So like a member of my team could be in the green room testing their audio, getting them framed up, mm. making sure everything's good to go. So once they're in with me, it's no, there's no kinks. There's nothing to work out. Everything's ready to go. It's also super embarrassing. Like if I hop on a Zoom call and they can't hear me and I'm trying to figure it out, it's embarrassing. Mm. So a green room can kind of get rid of that. Yeah. Also, I thought was cool. Um, it's browser based. So there's no, nothing to download. It's everything is done online. Which again has its perks and its flaws. The perk is, you know, if you have if you have like a regular laptop, if you have like an HP like I got with not the best specs, all you need is a good internet connection, and for the most part, you should be okay. But you're also relying on the internet connection. So if it's, something kicks out or you you reach a schism, you're screwed. Squad uh, Squadcast records. Uh, it's cloud based. Yeah, yeah, it's both. We're cloud, we're cloud uh, and local. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Gotcha. Uh, but I'm assuming you would need to download and use another app for editing. I didn't see anything in their package that had anything to do with editing the actual podcast. There's no like interface from you actually edit stuff on. So that was a big downside for me. Where it's just like, okay, I can record and record stuff on here, but if I need to get something else to edit it on, I could also record it on that. Unless your podcast is super raw, or you hand it off to an editor and they take care of it. That'd be my only guess, but it's just I'm an I'm an all in one guy. If something is all in one, I think it's more useful. Absolutely. So I am not saying you should or shouldn't use Squadcast. I'm just saying it is an option. Um, it is available in twenty dollar, forty dollar, and eighty dollar per month tiers. Mm. So you can go check out the website and check out like what the different tiers mean and this, that, and the other. Chris, what do you think of Squadcast just overall? Based off what um you're saying, um. It sounds pretty cool, um, and the major differentiator between the next platform we're going to speak on, I think, is the the um, fact that you there's no in-house um, editing features. Yeah, um, which again I think is is really important, especially if you're going to be charging, you know, eighty dollars a month. Up to eighty dollars a month. You know, I pay eighty dollars a month for Pro Tools. Yeah, <laughs> eighty-five. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, that's just my two cents on that. 